कंटिन्यू रीडिंग कृष्णा बुक बाय ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शिला प्रभुपाद चैप्टर 89 नाइन द सुपर एक्सलेंट पावर ऑफ कृष्ण लॉन्ग अगो लॉन्ग लॉन्ग अगो दे वॉज एन असेंबली ऑफ ग्रेट सेजेस ऑन द बैंक ऑफ द रिवर सरस्वती हु परफॉर्म अ ग्रेट सेक्रीफाइस ऑफ द नेम शास्त्र in such assemblies the great sages present usually discuss vedic subject matters and philosophical topics and in this particular meeting the following question was raised the three predominating deities of this material world namely lord brahma lord vishnu and lord shiva are directing all the affairs of this cosmos but who among them is the supreme After much discussion on this question the great sage named Brigumuni the son of Lord Brahma was deputed to test all three predominating deities and report to the assembly as to who is the greatest being thus deputed the great sage Brigumuni first of all went to his father's residence in Brahmaloka the three deities are the controllers of the three material qualities namely the qualities of goodness passion and ignorance the plan decided upon by the sages was for brigu to test which one of the predominating deities possesses the quality of goodness in full therefore when brigu muni reached his father lord brahma because brigu muni wanted to test whether brahma had the quality of goodness he purposely kick he purposely did not offer his respects to his father either by offering obeisances or by offering prayers it is the duty of our son or our disciple to offer respects and recite suitable prayers when he approaches his father or spiritual master but brigumuni purposely failed to offer respects just to see lord brahma's reaction to this negligence lord brahma was very angry at his son's impudence and he showed signs which definitely proved this to be so He was even prepared to condemn Brigu by cursing him but because Brigu Muni was his son Lord Brahma controlled his anger with his great intelligence this means that although the quality of passion was prominent on Lord Brahma he had the power to control it Lord Brahma's anger and his controlling his anger are likened to fire and water water is produced from fire at the beginning of creation but fire can be extinguished with water similarly although lord brahma was very angry due to his quality of passion he could still control his passion birgumuni was his son because birgumuni was his son after testing lord brahma brigumuni went directly to mount kailash where lord shiva resides brigumuni happened to be lord shiva's brother therefore as soon as brigumuni approached lord shiva was very glad and personally rose to embrace him but when lord shiva approached brigumuni approached when lord shiva approached brigumuni refused to embrace him my dear brother he said You are always very impure because you are smear because you smear your body with ashes you are <coughs> you are not very clean please <coughs> do not touch me when brigumuni refused to embrace his brother saying that lord shiva was impure the latter became very angry with him it is said that an offense can be committed either with the body with the mind or by speech brigumuni's first offense committed toward lord brahma was an offense with with the mind second offense committed toward lord shiva by insulting him criticizing him for unclean habits was an offense by speech because the quality of ignorance is prominent in lord shiva When he heard Brigu's insult his eyes immediately became red with anger with uncontrollable rage he took up his trident and prepared to kill Brigumuni at that time lord shiva's wife parvati was present her personality like lord shiva's is a mixture of the three qualities and therefore she is called trigunmai In this case she saved the situation by evoking Lord Shiva's quality of goodness she fell down at the feet of her husband and with her sweet words she talked him out of killing Brigumuni 
After being saved from the anger of Lord Shiva, Brigamuni went directly to the planet Swetadup, where Lord Vishnu was lying on a bed with flowers in the company of his wife. The goddess of fortune who was engaged in massaging his lotus feet, there Brigamuni purposely committed the greatest sin by offending Lord Vishnu by his bodily activities. The first offence committed by Brigamuni was mental, the second offence was vocal, and the third offence was corporal. Was corporal. These different offences are progressively greater in degree. An offence committed within the mind is a positive offence. The same offence committed verbally is comparatively more grave, and when committed by bodily action, it is superlative in offensiveness. So Brigomoni committed the greatest offense by kicking the chest of Lord of the Lord in the presence of the goddess of fortune. Of course, Lord Vishnu is all merciful. He did not become angry at the activities of Brigomoni, for Brigomoni was a great Brahmana. A Brahmana is to be excused even if he sometimes commits an offense. And Lord Vishnu set the example. Yet. It is said that from the time of this incident, the goddess of fortune Lakshmi has not been very favorably disposed toward the Brahmanas. And therefore, because the goddess of fortune withholds her benedictions from them, the Brahmanas are generally very poor. Brigamuni's kicking the chest of Lord Vishnu was certainly a great offense, but Lord Vishnu is so great that he did not care. The so-called Brahmanas of the Kali Yuga are sometimes very proud that a great Brahmana like Brigamuni could touch the chest of Lord Vishnu with his foot. But in fact, when Brigamuni kicked the chest of Lord Vishnu, it was the greatest offense. Although Lord Vishnu being greatly magnanimous, did not take it very seriously. Instead of being angry or cursing Brigamuni, Lord Vishnu immediately got up from his bed along with his wife, the goddess of fortune, and offered respectful obeisances to the Brahmana. He addressed Brigamuni as follows, My dear Brahmana, it is my greatest fortune that you have come here. Please therefore sit down on this cushion for a few minutes. My dear Brahmana, I am very sorry that when you first entered my home, I could not receive you properly. It was a great offense on my part, and I beg you to pardon me. You are so pure and great that the water which washes your feet can purify even the places of pilgrimage. Therefore, I request you to purify the Vaikuntha planet where I live with my associates. My dear father, O oh great sage, I know that your feet are very soft like a lotus flower and that my chest is as hard as the thunderbolt. I am therefore afraid that you may have felt some pain by kicking my chest. Let me touch your feet to relieve the pain you have suffered. Lord Vishnu then began to massage the feet of Brigamuni. The Lord continued to address Brigamuni, My dear Lord, he said, My chest has now become sanctified because of the touch of your lotus feet, and I am now assured that the goddess of fortune Lakshmi will be very glad to live there perpetually. Another name for Lakshmi is Chanchala, indicating that she does not stay in one place for a long time. Therefore, we see that a rich man's family sometimes becomes poor after a few generations, and sometimes we see that a poor man's family becomes very rich. Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, is Chanchala. In this material world, where is? In the Baikuntha planet, she eternally lives at the lotus feet of the Lord. Because Lakshmi is famous as Chanchala, Lord Narayana indicated that she might not have been living perpetually by his chest. But because his chest had been touched by the feet of Brigamuni, it was now sanctified. And there was no chance that the goddess of fortune would leave. Brigamuni, however, could understand his position and that understand his position and that of the Lord, and he was struck with wonder at the behavior of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because of his gratitude, his voice choked up and he was unable to reply to the words of the Lord. Tears glided down from his eyes and he could not say anything simply. He simply stood silently before the Lord. 
After testing Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu, Brigamuni returned to the assembly of great sages on the bank of the river Saraswati and described his experience. After hearing him with great attention, the sages concluded that of all the predominating deities, Lord Vishnu is certainly the greatest. Lord Vishnu is greatest. In Srimad Bhagavatam, these great sages are described as Brahma Vadinam. Brahma Vadinam means those who talk about the Absolute Truth but have no, not yet come to a conclusion. Generally, Brahma Vadi refers to the impersonist or the those who are students of the Vedas. It is to be understood, therefore, that all the gathered sages were serious students of the Vedic literature but had not come to the definitive definitive conclusion as to who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But after hearing of Brigamuni's experience in meeting all three predominating deities, Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu, the sages concluded that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Truth, the Personality of Godhead. It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam that after hearing the details from Brigamuni, the sages were astonished because although Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva were immediately agitated, Lord Vishnu, in his spite of being kicked by Brigamuni, was not agitated in the least. The example is given that small lamps may be agitated by a slight breeze, but the greatest lamp or the greatest illuminating source, the sun, is never moved even by the greatest hurricane. One's greatness has to be estimated by one's ability to tolerate provoking situations. The sages gathered, gathered on the bank of the river Saraswati concluded that one who wants, wants actual peace and freedom from all fear should take shelter of the lotus feet of Vishnu. Since Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva lost their peaceful attitude upon a slight provocation, how can they maintain the peace and tranquility of their devotees? As for Lord Vishnu, however, it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that anyone who accepts Lord Vishnu or Krishna as the Supreme Friend attains the highest perfection of peaceful life. The sages thus concluded that by following the principles of Vaishnava Dharma, one becomes actually perfect, but that if one follows all the religious principles of a particular sect and does not become advanced in understanding the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu, all such labor of love, love is fruitless. To execute religious principles means principles to means to come to the platform of perfect knowledge if one comes to the platform of perfect knowledge then he will be un uninterested in material affairs perfect knowledge means knowledge of one's own self and the supreme self the supreme self and the individual self although one in quality are different in quantity this analytic analyticalist understanding of knowledge is perfect similarly to understand i am not matter I am a spirit is not um, is not um, perfect knowledge. The real religious principle is devotional service or bhakti. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, where Lord Krishna says, "Give up all other religious principles and simply surrender unto me." Therefore, the term dharma applies only to Vaishnava dharma or Bhagavad dharma by following which one automatically achieves all good qualities and advancement in life. The highest perfectional knowledge is knowledge of the Supreme Lord. He cannot be understood by any process of religion other than devotional service. Therefore, the immediate result of perfect knowledge is achieved by executing devotional service. After attainment of knowledge, one becomes uninterested in the material world. This is not because of the dry philosophical speculation. The devotees become uninterested in the material world not simply because of theoretical understanding and that because of practical experience. When a devotee realizes the effect of association with the Supreme Lord, he naturally hates the association of so-called society, friendship and love. The detachment is not dry but is due to achieving a higher status of life by relishing transcendental mellows. 
It is further stated in Srimad Bhagavatam that after attainment of such knowledge and such a detachment from material sense gratification, once advancement in the eight appellances attained through mystic yoga practice such as the anima, laghima, and prapti siddhis is also achieved without a separate effort. The perfect example is Maharaj Ambaris. He was not a mystic yogi but a great devotee, yet in a disagreement with Maharaj Parik Ambarish, the great mystic Durvasa Muni was defeated in the presence of the king's devotional attitude. In other words, a devotee does not need to practice the mystic yoga system to achieve power. The power is behind him by the grace of the Lord. Just as when a small child is surrendered to a powerful father, all the powers of the father are behind him.